welcome to Freaky Fauna Friday, where every Friday we take a little time and explore some of the freaks of nature from around the planet we cherish so deeply. So please, jump aboard and let's explore the wilds together. Oh yes. Welcome back. It's just wonderful to be here. Freaky Fauna Friday. I just love Fridays. For this freaky fauna show. Exactly. I am the great and peaceful mystery. And I'm Jay. I'm just Jay. Just Jay. We're going to talk today about Valarnia ventricosia. Can we, what's the real name? So, that is the real name. What's the non-Latin scientific mumbo jumbo name? It actually means big ball. Oh. No, these guys are also known as bubble algae, sea grapes, or sailors' eyeballs, or pirates' eyes. Oh. Oh, pirate eye, eh? It's a species of single-celled algae found in the oceans through the world, in the tropics and subtropic regions, within the the subphylum uh, Chloroplatia, Hmm. and it is the largest known unicellular organism. Wow. So these guys are one, they're just one cell. One cell. That's it. Hmm. How big do you think a single-celled organism can get? Well, is this like the biggest one? Yes. Um, so we're talking about extreme. Well, they said a grape, like grape. So I'm guessing grape yeah, they, size. They call them sea grapes, and it's more because they look they're green. Okay. They look kind of like a you know like a round ball that's green, like a grape. Right. So it's not really. I'll I'll give you the hint. It's not really to do with their size. Ah. Okay. It's really just to do with their overall appearance. Okay. I'm still going about grape size. About grape size. Well, you'd be wrong. Oh, shoot. I try to help you with the hint. It's bigger? Yes. Like cue ball? Like pool table? Bigger. Bigger than that? Yeah, baseball to softball. Holy smoke! That's some of the biggest ones I've seen. That's not the top out size of them, I'm sure. Just, you know, because we only get a scene when they wash up. But we'll talk about these guys. There's not a, there's not a ton of ton to them besides that they're just these giant spheres that kind of pop up on reefs. Mm. A lot of people pick them up, think they're uh, trash. Wow. And they're actually a big living thing. Wow. But yeah. So these are a cyanocryptia structure within a multi-nuclide chloroplast. It's a lot of big words. So the nuclei is the like the brain of the cell. Okay. You're right, right, right. It's nucleus. The, yeah, the nucleus, the head of the cell. These guys have multiple ones because of how big they are. Okay. So kind of think of it. They, they're huge, but they're one cell full of chloroplast. Chlor- chloroplast. It's going to be one of those days I can't talk, I can tell. Uh, but yeah, they just so that's kind of how they work, is they have a whole bunch of these essentially little brains floating around in them that kind of organize the stuff. Okay. The organism possesses a super large central vascula, which is a multi-tubular in structure. Lobes radiating from the central spheroid region. So it's kind of like got a center to it, and everything comes out of that center. All right. It's very complex and simple. It is, it's, it's all in one. It's a weird thing. Okay, I mean, that's the point of Freaky Fauna Friday. <laughs> and this t- technically isn't fauna. It's a you know it's its own little subcategory. It's like a little fauna. This membrane they're overlaid by a cell wall. It's only about four nanometers thick, or forty sorry, forty nanometers thick. Uh, which is nothing. I was just saying, how big's a nanometer? But they, they're pretty tough to feel when you the touch like when you touch them they. They have almost a plasticky feel to them. So durable? Not durable. I mean, you could sit there and pop them. Like like a little one of those little stress balls. Like a like a Walmart bag. Oh, okay. You know where you, you can feel like there's plastic, but you could poke your finger right through it if you wanted to. Gotcha. Yeah. The thinnest plastic they make. Right. Okay. Uh, but yeah, they typically grow individually, but in rare cases they grow in large groups, which gives them their name, sea grapes. Ah, uh, like little clusters. Yeah. So yeah, that's like I said, the the sea grape title doesn't really come from their size, it comes from just their appearance. Gotcha. They appear in tidal zones of tropical and subtropical areas from the Caribbean, uh, north through Florida, south through Brazil, the Indo-Pacific area. Overall, their habitat is in every ocean throughout the world, often living in coral rubble. The greatest observed depth for visibility is approximately 80 meters or 260 feet down. Mm. So they, they stay in the light zone. They live on the dying edges of reefs most of the time, but they can kind of pop up anywhere. 
there's not really any rhyme or reason for a lot of the areas they end up in. And they're only in the ocean or sea or salt water? Yes. Yeah. They're an ocean animal or an mm. ocean thing. So there's not a, a freshwater equivalent, is there? Yeah. They're all, not of this species. There mm. are large single celled freshwater things, but not this, like, not this big. Okay. Just like there's jellyfish in the Great Lakes. That's right. A single celled organism has its range uh, from a spherical to an ovoid in shape. Their colors vary from most of the time they're like a grass green to a dark green. Although they may appear to be silver, teal, and even black. Wow. I've kind of seen pictures of all of them. Uh, and it's Diverse. Kind of, it's the, how stressed the chlorophyll in them is. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, they kind of change color depending on that. This is determined by the quality of the chloroplast in each specimen. The surface of the cell shines like glass. was clean due to its extreme smoothness with no texture. So a lot of people think these are like big glass balls rolling around. Yeah. And it's like the fake eye. Pirate eye. Yeah. Uh, they're among the largest known single-celled organisms. Uh, they consist of a thin-walled but tough multi-quality cell, which is determined the range typically from one to four centimeters, which is uh, one or zero point four to one point inch, or one point six inches. Although they may achieve great diameters, all the way up to four and a half inches across. Oh wow! So they're like softball-sized. Yeah. The bubble algae is attached by rhizomes to structured fibers. So they kind of anchor their self down with like little fibers. Reproduction of the curds, when they, the cell actually divides, ah. where, multi, uh, yeah, where they, they basically split into two, makes two child cells, uh, individual ribosomes for each new bubble, become separate from their parent cell. So they're budding. Yeah. Or it's, not it's, budding. No, it's dividing. Yeah, what's that called? Uh, division, cell division. Yeah, but there's, what's that reproduction called? What's the name of that? Division. Division reproduction? That don't sound right. That is the type of reproduction. Isn't it like... Cell division is the type of reproduction. All right, fine. What are you getting at? I don't know. I don't know. Do you want me to make up a word for you? Yes. I, I don't know what you want. Oh, okay. Uh, they've been studied particularly because these cells are so unusually large, they provide a constant subject for studying the transfer of water and water-soluble molecules across biological membranes. So basically, we're using a lot of these in labs... Because it's super easy to see how drugs and materials interact with a cell when you could hold the cell so, and, and look at it in your hand. Yeah, not through a microscope? Yeah. Like, yeah, this is naked eye science. It has been concluded that the properties of the permeability in both osmosis and diffusion were identical. And this, uh, the urn and the formaldehyde molecules did not require any kind of water-filled pores in the membrane to move through them. Basically, they're just doing all this stuff to see how different chemicals pass through a cell. Gotcha. Uh, they undergo extreme, extensive x-rays, analy analytic procedures. It's also been studied by electronic properties due to its unusually high electronic potential relative to the seawater surrounding it. Mm. We don't really know what that means yet. Uh, they have a lot of odd properties even outside of being a supersized cell. cell. Yeah. And we're still kind of researching them. It's weird that something something so simple – could have so many mysteries hidden within it. So much potential behind yeah. it. Um, they are considered a pest by some aquarium owners. They can re reproduce extremely quickly and endanger the health of fish and other organisms. Hmm. That's mainly by sumping up all the oxygen. Can't you just see them and pick them up? The problem with a lot of these guys, like uh, there's a lot, like, a lot of anemones and stuff that pop up. Protect in a, them? In aquariums. Uh -huh. Is it when you see one that's probably too late? Oh, gotcha. Because there's already probably so many in there that they're going to just kill everything. Hmm. But yeah, because these guys still need oxygen when the lights are off. You know, they right. photosynthesize during the day, but they'll actually cause the DO to just disappear or overnight. drop, yeah. We should get one of these taxidermized and put up on the shelf. I have, I don't even know how you would do such a thing. Oh, come on. It'd be easy. Define easy. You just get one, and you put it in a epoxy. And just let it sit. That would be about the only way, but that's not easy. That's not taxiderming. Sure, it is. What's the difference? Taxidermy is removing the skin and putting it on a on a mold. No, taxidermy is which making it last a lifetime. I meant to just have one of these things in a resin block, and as it starts <laughs> to rot away, it just it would probably pop the resin block. I bet you pop it because it, it what would happen is it would decompose on the inside and build up a bunch of gas. I don't think it would pop, though. 
I don't know. That should be worth. I think I seen somebody. That'd be worth an experiment. Resin a big mushroom and it popped. No, it was a, it was a pumpkin. Sorry, it was a pumpkin because they wanted to save their their jack o' lantern. Yeah, they put it in a resin block and it popped and it was in their closet and it was disgusting. That's gross because it built up so much so much pressure from all the gas mm. of it decomposing. They didn't re- they didn't resin it right. I mean, it wasn't like. I, I, it was a big pumpkin, so the right, resin, yeah, some of the areas of the resin weren't like thin. extremely thick. I wouldn't yeah. say thin, but, but not like like half an inch thick. Then that's too thin. Something that big. Yeah, and we know resin can take forever to cure. Oh yeah, still still was curing. But yeah, so that's your pirate's eyes. Pirate's eyes, sea grapes. Yeah, just a nice little simple animal. I thought it was cool because they're big single celled animals, but yeah. there's not a lot known about them. Guess you're right. Cell division makes. I keep forgetting it was just one cell. So yeah, guess that it's right. There's no organ. Like no, there's no organs. They only have organelles. Right. Yeah. Like mitochondria, lysosomes. What well, mitochondria are for? Uh, that's the powerhouse of the cell they're for energy for production. ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Animals. Yeah. This is an animal. Freaky fauna. I know. I got to cheat it. Oh, wow. These are photosynthesizers. The integrity of the show. Oh, don't worry. There will be a mushroom on the show eventually, which isn't fauna, but isn't flora. Is this Freaky Flora Friday? No, it's not that. It's its own thing. It's a single-celled organism. Oh, okay. But what's the cell fall under? The other one of the other groups of the what's, little tree of life. What subphyla is this? Uh, it's, a, it's its own kingdom. I mean, I don't even want to go into its own kingdom. Uh, is this a shadow biosphere we're dealing with? Veraplati day. I don't know what actually. It doesn't. My little article doesn't tell me what kingdom it's in. Wow, this is an alien. I have the division, class, order. Chloroplatia. It's a plant. Maybe. Maybe. Algae. Oh, no, it's an algae. It's an algae. A single-celled algae. Yeah, it's an algae. Okay. Algae subphyla. Kingdom algaeus. Kingdom algaeus. No, so yeah, they're just weird. They're just weird, but there'll be mushrooms on this show and stuff like that. I'll cheat more. All right. Oh, well. It's alive. You're right. It's alive. That's what matters. It's life. But yeah, what's their word? Is the wisdom going into Friday, going well, into the weekend? Just like this show... We celebrate life. So why don't you go out there this weekend and celebrate your life? Get the sun in your eyes. Get the wind in your hair. Let's see. We're only a couple weeks away from the eclipse. I don't know if anybody's local to Ohio or the eclipse path. If you are. Go check it out. Go check it out, the eclipse. Just I don't think it's the end of the world, but it could be. Stand outside and stare at it. Not an expert. Just look right at it. Don't look right at it good for you all right guys bye Bye. thank you for listening to freaky fauna friday if you want to help the podcast grow remember to share and give it a five star review